Hello, this is Shamrandi, and um, I hope this video is going to probably like bring a little relief for some parents. If you know somebody that can benefit from hearing this, then I would like you to share it. Um, definitely share this video. Okay, so this today's video is going to be about that favorite child. <laughs> So I'm a boy mom. I have more than one child and, um, you know, and then we have like other little boys in our family and so on. Right. And it's really important for us to understand, even from our own experiences, like what creates a favorite child. Right. Like we don't like our parents less because our sibling is um, your parent's favorite child. No, we, you know, there's some, there, there is some thought processes that need to happen. So more or less to, to relax your old thoughts and to also prepare the future generation. Okay. Um, if, if you take the time to be introspective, you can understand your parents' journey. Um, so some of us, um, who were brave enough to forge ahead and have children, um, we end up like getting our lessons on how children become or is a parent's favorite, okay? And, and, and I say brave enough because some of us would not like to admit, but it, it takes bravery for you to forge ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna become a mom. Like even if you really wanna become a mother, it is um it's it's a bravery that encourages us to move forward with that some of us i won't point any fingers it's a personal battle within ourselves we didn't have kids because we were afraid to have children right i went through that season of my life where i was totally totally afraid to have kids right hence why i just was so stickler about my reproductive health it was very very important it's actually one of the top three keys for me whenever i mentor young women um protect your reproductive health at all costs Okay, if, if, if you've been mentored by me and you are under the age of 30, you we've had this conversation. Okay, um, so that bravery, it looks like many things, right? We were not there when our parents developed their friendship or their relationship with the other parent, okay? And all of these things actually set the set the way for it sets the way it like sets the tone for the birth story okay so the relationship that we have with the other parents sets the tone for the birth story hopefully the relationship you know had some kind of good basis um even if it didn't start out with the intention of like okay we're gonna procreate and have a family Hopefully those two individuals took the time to like get to know each other as well as possible, right? Even if they did not take the time to get to know each other as well as possible, we all would like to know there's a thunderstorm moving in, right? So like I just like lost all kind of light. But we would like to know that there was a level of maturity that existed between the two that allowed them to have great communication once it was established like hey we may have to go we are going on this journey together right so hopefully one parent had the kind of patience that the other parent needed to kind of like get settled in into that thought to get uh acclimated to a choice that is being made right so sometimes it can be harder for the men than for the women because the women, it you know, it kind of starts out with like, oh, my body doesn't feel so well. Maybe this could be the issue. And then it just kind of like rolls along from there, right? For women, it's more of a process, most women, right? We're not talking about the immaculate conceptions and the women that were out there playing football the day of they deliver the baby. We're not talking about those, right? <laughs> because because those stories are real right those those are real birth stories okay 
I know people that had those kind of birth stories, but I also know um, the kind of journey it has been for many people along the way. So once that section of the relationship or the communication of that relationship has been to some degree ironed out, the next thing is going to be the birth story. The way that that mom is able to care for herself, okay, was she's continuously on a treadmill throughout her whole pregnancy up to the day she gave birth, right? Did she have time, even if she was, you know, somebody that had responsibility, was she encouraged to have time where she can, like, focus in on herself, right? Was there time for her to rest? Um, whether it was ordered bed rest, whether it was something that she kind of just made time for. The other thing that happens that, uh, you know, for most women, and I find this to be thoroughly healthy, is women that take the time to use that time to educate themselves. This pregnancy time is for me to learn all what I don't know, but I need to know for for my mind to be at ease. Excuse me. Thank you. All right, so for my mind to be at ease. So it's really important that um, if you are a perspective and um, you're the man and the woman is, um, you know, you, you're not the birth mother or if you are the birth mother, take that time and like really focus on all that you need to focus on. Make up your mind. Like, do you want to have a natural birth? Are you okay with interference during your birth story? Have you thought about getting a doula? Do you have a doula? Should you get a doula? Do you have a midwife? What does your doctor have? Is your doctor private? What hospital is he connected to? She connected to? Iron out all those and do not be afraid of it. Do not let anxiety take you over. These are very, very important things for you to like really approach head on and then sort out what are all your options, okay? The other thing too is that um, when we divulge to the people in our family, how was the news received, right? That, that also um, causes the birth story to take the paths that it takes, okay? Um, so, so sometimes there was shame involved, right? Um, I know, <laughs> here's a little story. I know that my mom faced a lot of that when she was having, when she was pregnant, right? Because she didn't really tell people. They just like, you know, but we, you know, we're from like, we were from like a village environment. Village environment, everybody's minding your business, right? I actually have a whole topic about that. Like don't date like a village girl, right? <laughs> right, so everybody was like minding her business and she just, you know, she just had to figure out how was she handling this until whatever, right? My mother wrote her own birth story and I encourage women uh, that are planning on having children or, you know, on that journey to write your own birth story. Like write it out on paper, dictate that, write it, scribe it, okay? <laughs> um, so uh, the other thing is gonna be that when when it is when that information is is discussed oh wait a minute guys all right so So when they then divulge and share that part of themselves with other people, it's like, how was the information received? Um, <laughs> so 
sometimes, okay, without unbeknownst to us, the people that we think us, they want to see everything go smoothly with us. Ideally, we would like to think that, but that's not always the case. And I say that because it's just a fact, okay? Some people that are going to say, like, oh, that's hocus pocus, or that's, you know, that's all that crunchy stuff. What they are ignoring is that what happens in a human's heart is secretive, right? Some of them, it may show up in their face in their affect okay but you don't truly truly know so it sometimes it's a good idea for you to keep these things to yourself until you're ready to share it with the world right like for an instance me personally um when i had my well i didn't have any i had maternity i had maternity photo shoots for my pregnancies but by the time it hit uh, social media or the images were distributed or anything like that, the baby was already here. The baby was safely here. Um, I know of situations where, and, and, I, and, and this caused me to cry, um, I know of a situation where a client, she was a past client um, of our company. I, I used to be in media at one point with my ex-husband. And I remember when she shared her maternity. It wasn't even the maternity shots. She shared like images that she's, I don't want to use the word stole. Um, she shared images that were not like images that were given from the photographer that were edited and everything. It was like, hey, this is what's happening at my photo shoot. And she shared it. And then I'm clutching my pearls, right? Because, uh, I, you know, it, it's something unspoken. Many people from the African diaspora and from Africa, they we understand this. It's almost like an unwritten thing for many West Indian um, people, right? Um, that have like a connection to their like roots and stuff like that, right? So it's like an awareness. And I just thought to myself like, oh my God, why are these images going out? Because I know what's happening and what happens in the spiritual realm, people. This has nothing to do with religion, okay? It is you being in tune. Take the time. Get to know yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk to God. Talk to the universe, right? And, and, and ask, what should I be really, really aware of? Because it's like stuff will be going on and you think, like, oh, that has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. Okay, and an unfortunate situation happened as a result of that. And I just, I, it's like this person was my own sister. I got scared right away. Okay, so all of this, believe it or not, has to do with birth children becoming favorites. Okay, of their children. Now, for that woman that may have experienced something traumatic right before, during, while she was pregnant, sometimes the heaviness of that stress can affect that pregnancy. It is something that will be triggered um, and it becomes part of the birth story. So, because it becomes part of the birth story, it would have a lot to do with why there's an attachment to that child over other children, okay? Um, sometimes there's, there's women, there's, there's, there are these goddesses among us that they can easily pop out eight kids and they don't even think twice about it, right? It's like these babies are easy to make. They have no morning sickness. It's like, oh, there was a little And these babies just come out like that. And then there's some of us that it's a little bit more than that, right? It, th these babies are, you know, it, it has a different effect on our body. All of those things have to do with you know the birth story and it has to do with where you fall on the totem pole with the parent okay there are also some children now the children have come okay the birth story has been written now you're rearing them now you're rearing them depending on how much of a free thinker you want the children to have something may happen where the thought process of one of those children matures sooner 
then the parent thinks and the child may speak about that automatically can cause a negative experience. Now, it, with a mature parent, it shouldn't happen automatically that child is blacklisted or gray listed or yellow listed, whatever, okay? If, if, if you are a parent that it has to do with maturity level, right? We, we cannot speak about what our parents' maturity level is at the time when they had us. We just have to kind of like understand where they were and acknowledge it. And if there needs to be forgiveness, there needs to be forgiveness, okay? So I say all of this for us to put ourselves in both vantage points. How did our parents see us and how we need to govern ourselves when it is our turn to be parents, okay? Or if we're already along in that journey, how do we need to go ahead and govern ourselves, okay? So child can say the kind of bond, how needy that child is, the level of independence they have, right? Like just do they give more stress do they give less stress all of that has to do with where the child falls in order in levels of favoritism with the parent now does it make it right let's not let it not be about what's right or wrong no let's not do that okay um but it is something that you need to be aware of so if you are the parent you need to make it your duty that if you do find yourself falling on those kind of scales that you are compensating the other child make it your duty to compensate the other child for some of us where we have our children stepped a bit there's not these huge gaps uh, where we don't have like a 10 year old and then we're not having another baby some of us do that right um th th that's a scary situation because i know that happened to a woman and she was threatened the entire way right her child her older child threatened her which whatever i don't i don't i don't have an opinion about that um <laughs> but you know, we have to pay attention to those things. So if we have one child that is constantly vying for our, our attention, we have to, in time, there's going to be opportunities and situations where you're going to be like, okay, how about look at the time. Let's make this time for you and I to have a chat. I want to make time for sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so, right? And then you make that time or you make it or an outing for the child that has a harder time with communicating or hasn't totally grown into their ability to communicate or whatever the case may be. You may need to speak to them separately, right? Speak to them separately, but love them equally. You gave that one three hugs, give this one three hugs. Please guys, do not go giving, you know, like make sure that there's balance. In situations where one child is constantly, uh, is very competitive, that's the word. Sometimes some children are very competitive and you may need to have those grown conversations that, you know, there's, it's great to be competitive with doing, but in brotherhood and in sisterhood, nice, right? We do not want our siblings to feel X, Y, and Z, right? No, because just as much as you're amazing, she's amazing. We like you want to make sure that you're taking that time to break it up with the children. Now, for some of us, our favoritism in our own families can have to do with the birth order and the birth story. Like, what season of our, of our mother's life was she was she in when she had me, or when she had my sister, or when she had my other sister, or when she had that brother, or when she had the older brother, or whatever the case may be. Right? Usually, when the first child comes. There is a level of naivety that the parent has. They themselves are still a child in their mind and need to be and still needs tons of mothering, right? Or they're getting the mothering and there's that place of uh, support. Then there's other times where, you know, that mom is winging it like her whole dynamic of support system has fully broken down or maybe there is a great support system and then there's all these other surrogate parents that that younger child has if there are other older children right so in in those cases that child may not necessarily be the closest to the parent coming up 
um, maybe closest to one of the siblings, but nonetheless, they love the mom or the parent just as much as the other children love the parent, okay? So let us do what we can on our behalf when we have our own children for our children to not feel or feel like they've been given less love because another sibling is the favorite okay maybe we don't even use that word right there's always there was always this joke i've been to several you know funerals um of people in from my own uh should I say community? I want to say like from from my background, and it 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 was it's something that par that parents did all, the, especially the fathers, right? They would tell the kids, you know, you're my favorite. <laughs> like a full on argument having happening. Parent, Lord have mercy, and I will always be the like, why did they do that? What is that about? Can we behave ourselves, guys? We're fifty five. We're 75, we're 60, and we're having these arguments. And then sometimes it's, our, it's not done in jest. Oh, no, no, no. It gets real. It gets at attitude. Somebody isn't giving, offering somebody else a drink later on in the day at the repast. Oh, my God. Like, let, like, <laughs> You know, you know, the other thing, too, which is, is 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 has a lot to do with like American. Well, should it should be part of culture is like, you know, divvying up property, right? Parents that do not divvy up property before they die Leave it for children to fight and argue. It causes such a problem. If you have um, if you have a, a, a will or you haven't written a will put something in writing even if you do a poor man's version of it something that isn't unopened something that's not opened make duplicates of it seal it let it run through the mailbox let it run through the whole mail system okay and let people know like this is coming or you leave it with your with your belongings and then and, and it has everybody's name on it so they know, okay, this is for me, this is for me, that's for me, whatever. That is just such a bad situation. It causes tons of problems. It is not good, uh, responsible. It's not the best thing. But, you know, sometimes parents allow it to happen because they did not fully come to terms with the fact that they had favorites, right? What can we do? All we can do is try to be better going forward. And that's what these videos are about, right? Let's, 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 let's talk about this. Let's share this video. Oh, and the last thing that I want to definitely leave with is, is forgiveness. Okay? If you had a parent that died and you felt like you weren't given a fair share of that parent's love, okay? First of all, you got to know that people operate within a... If they knew better, we would like to know that they would do better, okay? And for you to not internalize it and for you to know that it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. Like, take that load off of your chest. If the processes be... If the processes that you may have to cry about it, that's okay. Cry about it. Cry about it. Acknowledge that feeling. Maybe you need a journal. Write something down. Keep it in a journal. Or maybe you need to burn it afterwards. Whatever. Or throw it in the ocean. Or, you know, say a prayer while you're outside and you're barefoot. And you just, you whatever it is that you do or go to the moment. Maybe it's something that you could do right now in this moment temporarily that is to help you. And then something that you can do later on, right? Maybe it might be for you to have a mass for that parent. A mass is just simply an announcement that, you know, the priest makes when they actually have a mass, okay? And then you light a, you light a candle for that parent, okay? Um, and that's like, that's like in Catholicism, there's different levels to it, but, you want to get to the path of least, least resistance for it to be okay with you. Like, you have to be okay. If this video has evoked an emotion, I want you to acknowledge that emotion and know that you're not wrong for having that emotion, okay? And 
identify that they're in me and I want to get to the place where it doesn't trigger me with, with hurt in my heart, okay? Whatever it is that you have to do. Um, but, but know that it, it doesn't, it's not you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, you pay attention to children when they're young and then they could have done things that have triggered the parent. But you have to understand that when, however you behaved, you operated, you operated based on what it is you knew. You operated based on what you saw, right? And all you did was try to communicate. That was it, okay? Now, somebody that is mature is going to understand that that's what a child is doing. You understand. So that's why you yourself, if you're the adult, you need to understand. It has nothing to do with yours, okay? It's a growing pain nonetheless, but it's not a fault of yours. And you have to get to the place where you've released it and you've let it go, right? Be at peace, right? Forgive the feeling, forgive the thought, forgive the emotion, be at peace and know that it's not your fault and that all is, is well with you, right? And But you yourself are going to do all that you can do to not repeat a bad cycle, okay? So I hope that this conversation, that this video sparks um, healthy debate and healthy conversation um, among siblings. And, and then those of us who, it's just like, you know, that's okay. You know, that's okay. I'm my own person within my own right. And, and acknowledge and congratulate yourself for being that person and getting to that, to that level where you want to get to, or that you're on the road to getting there, right? Acknowledge that there be small celebrations. All right. This is Shamrandi from, uh, Life Design Topics. I hope you enjoyed this video please share it okay and um and know that it was made in love it's made totally in love and for you to learn from other people's experiences and 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 i congratulate you for even wanting to make it all the way to the end because that means that you are committed to evolving you're committed to doing better you're committed to learning that's awesome have a